friends it is sunday the 11th of october my name is kevin and thanks for joining me this morning if you are joining me hey, i got two of you up here all right then so uh i set up that um what was it called i suppose it was a preview um and the question was stop being selfish <laughs> um i wondered if that would get people's attention um and I'm often surprised by the kind of subject matter I want to come and meditate on and talk about and lift the spirit and just make people feel better than what they did when they started this. Mm. So why selfishness? I think because I am constantly amazed at behavior. Perhaps intrigued would be more appropriate, not so much amazed <laughs> people don't tend to amaze me too much anymore um but and i have to ask you know myself um 
it's normal and natural, I think, to fall into judgment when someone's being a bit self-centered and selfish. And it left me, led me to ask the question. I'm going through a, a phase, I think, now where um, is it judgment or is it curiosity? Am I making a judgment call about somebody? Well, yes, if it's malicious and what's coming out of my mouth is not particularly pleasant, then yes, straight up full on judgment. And I'll admit it doesn't happen as often as it did but it still happens and it's a knee jerk and it's all connected to ego what's interesting though I take my time I take a step back from it and look at the behavior and want to know where the root is well why did I feel that way why did I think that way what in the world has that person ever done and typically it's a people I don't know <laughs> which is even more bizarre um so this led me to work on the observation part, the inquiry part, and not so much just straight up judgment. Just like, well, wonder why that person's doing this, doing that, behaving that way. What comes up repeatedly is this selfishness. Um, you know, I watch all the time when you go to a coffee shop or you go to a store and you know I'll get up to the counter to pay somebody and um, you hear see or watch other people completely oblivious to the human that's helping them that's 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 behind the cash register half the time they don't even make eye contact is that just a sign of the times or are they just that self-centered that they don't care whether you take my money or not? Then that leads me to the, you know, the behavior factor. Did, when did we all get into this habit of behaving a certain way when we're with people that we're trying to impress and want to get something from them, which is selfish, and behaving another way when we didn't care, could care less, do not matter. Who are they? What do they matter? So I thought to myself, well, in what level is selfishness okay? You know, you read self-help groups or self-help books. So if someone's writing a self-help book, who's it helping? The person who wrote it? Or seemingly the person who's going to buy it, who's going to get some help from it? It's just quite interesting. Well, so I did my research. And that's the question you should ask. If somebody is a, believes that you're selfish or asks, are you being selfish? The question really is, who or what is what you're doing, saying, getting, achieving, helping? Because there are three different types of selfishness. There's the good selfishness, neutral selfishness, which I did not know about till I dug my nose into this subject. And then there's obviously the bad selfishness. So bad selfishness really is where it's a one-sided transaction. Stephen Covey talks about it. Classic example would be a criminal um, or a crime, um, you know, a person threatens another person who will not willingly give up whatever it is this person wants and they take it anyway by threatening violence or something else. But then there's also that side of folks who knowingly want something and manipulate the situation in order to get it. Uh, it's still a one-sided transaction. Um, yeah, well, I'm not doing that for you because you didn't do this for me. There's that selfishness, that judgment thing. Or, well, if you want me to take care of your kids on Saturday night, I need for you to pay me. Not, I'm happy to do it so you can go out and have an evening out. Now, what would make that good selfishness? All right, somebody needs their children watched while they go out for the evening. Ah, the benefit to the babysitter or the house sitter or whoever it is. Fabulous house, big screen TV, booze in the fridge. And hey, listen, I can watch your free Netflix or watch your free HBO. 
it works both ways. It's not necessarily self, but everybody's benefiting. The same token of if somebody has a coat that you want and you've got a jacket that they want, you can say, well, I see more value in what I'm giving you because I want what you've got. So there's like a swap. And that's where mutual selfishness comes into play or good selfishness. Then there's the good selfishness of what you get when you have the feeling of doing something that really, truly will benefit other people. Um, and I don't just mean the volunteerism, um, but, you know, uh, the other day I was uh, in a place looking at some things that were on sale. Um, they were clearanced and somebody came along with two wagons that were loaded to the gills and they were stuff was toppling all over the place and this person was trying to deal with one wagon while the other one was falling all over the place so you know I just dropped everything it makes it much easier for you if you if I help you so let me just help you get to where you're going so you can pay for all the things now that might be considered selfless and I actually felt good about doing it she felt good about getting the help and it was a win-win situation for everybody that's where it's not so much selfish or it's selfish that's mutually beneficial to everybody. The part of this selfishness thing that I found interesting was the neutral selfishness. I didn't know there was such a thing. Neutral selfishness is when you take time out to do something like brush your hair, take a shower, Take time out, meditate. Take time out to do something for yourself that will end up, it benefits you, but it also ends up benefiting other people because when you've meditated, hopefully you feel a little bit more relaxed, happier, lighter. Um, and for you, you feel that way. And other people get to benefit the fact that you're in a really good mood. Similarly, that if you take time out to take a bit of extra time to brush your teeth, groom, do your hair, other people don't have to be subjected to <laughs> bad breath, terrible hair, and you stink. <laughs> so the whole point of this is when we say stop being selfish, be aware of it. Be aware of how you're being this came up this morning early. I did my usual meditation at 5.30 um, and I usually pull a card from Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. Um, I love this deck. I, I don't know that there's been one day in the last maybe two, three weeks where I haven't pulled a card that's been somehow got a message. Uh, one of them kept coming up several times um, and it was still, was still a message in it. So this morning, there was a jumper. I'm shuffling away and one jumped out. And it was so delightful. It was the High Lady of Love and Compassion. Now, I don't want to repeat the meditation. It will be on the replay on YouTube if you want to go join in. But uh, there's some things in here that speak to um, how you can neutralize the feeling of either A, someone else has manipulated you into doing something you don't want to and you feel like they're selfish or you yourself feel like Oof, you're being a bit selfish by taking the last this or taking the last. It's just a way to neutralize the feeling of when you know you've done something and it hasn't been the greatest of feelings and you kind of want to neutralize it, feel better about it. So there was a one piece of this in this book that I, I love the way what it said and it says um, let's see um, here we go love's greatest creative power is ignited by the conscious action of compassion generosity of the heart reverence respect and empathy for all living things brings you profound power to live a life of happiness and contentment and I think that's really all what we want at least that's what I want. I don't know what you want. I can't tell. But living a life of compassion and contentment comes from the act of being 
unconditional, showing kindness, um, being selfless, but in the vein of while you're being selfless to others, you're not expected to get anything back. You just want to have the joy of doing something for someone else. All right, it's time to read our message and then get to the meditation. I'm putting the book. Well, hang on. Let's just do the magical feather and see what happens. Here we go. Oh, we pushed into November. So it opened up to nothing. All right. So let me try again. April 10th. Be aware of the energy around you. No crap. Um... This is written by Melody Beatty, who took herself on a one-year sabbatical. And every day she wrote, uh, basically journaled, and is affirmations. Um, and some of it is just her discoveries, uh, self-discovery while she was on this trip. I stopped at a quaint little store in the mountain city of Solvang, California. It was filled with clocks, tick, 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 ticking away. Some, sound, some sang, some chirped, some just ticked. If you wind them and leave them together long enough, they'll soon begin ticking together in harmony, the shopkeeper said. I listened. What she said was true. We are energy and vibration. When we're open, how easy is it to begin ticking to the rhythm of those around us? If we had kept ourselves locked up, and put away, it will be different. But since we've been chosen to be open, to be sensitive, to open our hearts and souls, we'll connect with, tick to, the vibration of those around us. Our energy fields will touch and emerge. We'll begin to feel and sometimes visibly take on the characteristics, rhythms and vibrations of those in our field. Pay attention to, choose carefully, those with whom you live, eat and play. There may be times when you can handle their energy and times where it isn't right for you. Sometimes when you're feeling off balance, it may be that we're around energy that just isn't right for us. Oh, isn't that the truth? So the affirmation for that is stay conscious of who you travel with on this journey of life. See who you're attracted to and notice who is attracted to you. See how much better you feel when you surround yourself with the energy of love. Hello, unconditional love, selflessness. It really does make a difference, I have to say. Um, and no coincidence. Um, I found that coming up a lot lately. There seems to be a lack of love. There seems to be a lack of selflessness. There just seems to be this ongoing... Um, yeah, need to spoil things for other people. Um, I don't know what that's, I don't know why that is. Um, I always believe that on our own, by ourselves, we're pretty powerful human beings. Hook up with other people who have the same interests and the same agenda. We're even more powerful, unstoppable. We just got to learn to try and find a way to everybody respect one another and just figure out a way to do this all right it's time to meditate um put your feet flat on the floor and take a big breath in let it out another breath in fill up release out let go one more time inhale big and deep Press and release. <sighs> now sit and feel your feet pressing into the surface of the floor.
Move up towards your knees and hips. Give your body a scan through your torso, paying attention to your spine line and everything that expands beyond it. Pay attention to the areas of your spine, your skeleton, your muscles, joints, and listen for what the sensations are in the specific areas of your body. Treat this as a voluntary observation rather than waiting for a sensation. Be observant of what you feel rather than being or looking for what it means or trying to find something to feel. The point of meditating is to be the observer of experience and to be the listener of the noise. Let whatever you're physically actually hearing be the experience of the listening. Begin to cultivate a culture within your being that is observant of experiences interested in experiences unattached emotionally from the experiences. Continue gliding up through the entire body, your entire body, everywhere. Know that you have the capacity to be in your body at the same time observing your body. Allow yourself to be open to be both the mirror and its reflection. Having the experience 
of your body, your sensations, interested in what you feel, listening to what you hear, unattached to any meaning of it. Continue allowing your breath into your body, releasing the air out of your body on your exhales. When thoughts come into your mind, and they will, acknowledge them just as a thought. Continue breathing like this, seeing what you see, hearing what you hear in the experience of you. Bring your mind awareness back into the room that you're in. Place your hands at prayer at heart centre. Is it an acknowledgement of you doing the work, being here? And lift your thumb knuckles up between your eyebrows and together we acknowledge one another as we bow and say namaste. Thank you, my friends. I have enjoyed that this morning and our little chit chat on selfishness and when you're being selfish. Um, you can catch this on the replay later on uh, on the YouTube. I'm going to post it to YouTube right now. Um, thanks so much. Have a great Sunday. Bye.